What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to week seven of the TRX4 budget build. If you're not familiar with the budget build, what we're doing is we're taking the TRX4 unassembled kit version and we're upgrading it with $50 every week. We've done seven weeks up to this point, but a couple of those weeks have been special. One week we weren't supposed to spend anything, one week was a running video, and one week we had a little bit of a cheat week. So already a few twists thrown in there early in the series, but we're back now with a regular $50 week and for this week, I've got a couple little things that I wanna do, but I wanna to touch first on last week's running video. So we took this truck out on the rocks for the first time. We've done a handful of upgrades and tuning, just kind of beginning to get the truck rolling in the direction that we really want to see it. And the biggest thing is, is that it's very clear that the TRX-4s are very top heavy. It's, you know, the portals exaggerate that, moving things up. And then there's just a lot of other factors with the design of the truck that do make them just more top heavy and less capable on certain situations. It just makes this truck struggle on steep climbs and side hilling. It's just not right there. And I get why people try and just load the axles up with brass because that kind of compensates for the top heavy nature of some of the other parts of this truck. But in the end, then you're having to pull all of that weight around while you are getting that center of gravity down and it may feel more stable in some situations when you're really trying to climb, you have to pull all that extra weight around. And while that extra weight maybe puts a little bit more force on the contact patch, when you start getting in a vertical situation, you lose some of that effective force. So you're just having to pull up more weight and therefore one of the biggest cons to just adding a bunch of weight. So after driving it more and getting a feel for this truck, there's definitely some drastic things that are gonna have to change to get this thing driving like a truck that I'm going to enjoy. I did take my bone stock TRX4 Sport out there as well. And this truck did perform better. I was more comfortable driving it, even though we haven't done a ton of modifications. It's just, you know, some things here and there, mainly approach and departure were the biggest noticeable things compared to that stock one versus this one. And then, you know, we do have a little bit of extra weight down low with the aluminum beadlock wheels and as well as the overdrive in the front axle is, is definitely going to help. I'll likely add the overdrive to the rear axle in a later video just to exaggerate the overdrive effect, which will help in climbing. But other than that, we're going to be looking at some other options to try and increase the performance of this, try and get it on the level that I'd really like to see. While running, I was not using that large track Axis 3S battery most of the time that sits in this you know center mounted section. Instead, I was using one of the Traxxas stubby packs that sits up in this front area. I actually didn't show installing that front battery tray. This actually is included with the inner fenders. I forgot to show the installation of that, but I did have it in there and I was running a smaller battery most of the time just because that large midship mounted pack was definitely a hindrance to the performance even further. The 1080 ES ESC is a solid ESC and it pushes that Traxxas 550 can motor really well. I didn't really have any complaints as far as that goes. Using that smaller battery though, it was a little low on punch. You know, a 1400 milliamp and only like a 20 or 30 C pack just really is gonna struggle a little bit on feeding amperage to a 550 can motor like that. So we may have to look at some other options for batteries up front. I don't love this area. While it does give me that forward weight bias, it's really high up there. I mean, that's a, that's a high mounted battery. I wish that I could find something that fit nice and low over on the side maybe, and that might be an option. We'll look at just, we'll throw some things around down the road. Uh, but for now, this is the best situation, although still not ideal. Did absolutely have fun driving the truck though, nonetheless. There's just having to get used to some of the situations and the portal axles clearly have advantages in other situations, specifically in some of that loose rock that I was running on where you really want that center axle clearance and the portals are just an undeniable advantage in that area. It's just with the type of running that I usually enjoy doing, which is big ledge climbing, you know, radical side hills, things like that, that's where this truck does not shine as well. So this week, what I think we're gonna do is tackle three modifications. The first one being that I'm going to remove completely this center mounted battery tray. It's weight that sits in the wrong part of the chassis that I don't want. And at this point to try and make this truck perform like I'd like, I don't plan to run a battery here. So I'm going to get that battery tray removed completely. 
There are lower center gravity battery trays that maybe we'll replace it with in the future, but for now, it's just going to get completely removed. Removing that battery tray is going to be very simple. We're gonna remove the two screws, one from each side in the rear fender wells, and then the two screws in the front side of the battery tray, and we're basically gonna be able to just pull and spin that thing out of place. And I'm just gonna set it in my spare parts box for now, and I don't think that I'll be throwing this version back in. The modification that we're going to tackle after that is adding a little bit of weight to the front. Again, I just talked about adding weight and the downsides of that, but we are going to have to add a little bit and we're gonna try and keep it as reasonable as possible. And I'm only ever going to be adding weight to the front side of this vehicle. I do not ever wanna add weight to the rear. Since last week we added the Vanquish Method 101 wheels up front, this week what we're going to do is we're gonna be adding the Vanquish 1.9 stainless brake weights. These are about 3.6 ounces for the pair, which is a little bit over 100 grams if you're looking and comparing grams to grams. So those we're gonna be able to throw up front. That's a super easy modification. What we're going to do is we're going to remove the six screws around the center hub of the wheel then we basically just put the stainless steel brake weight between the hub and the wheel face and then replace those six screws with the longer screws that are included with the stainless steel brake weights. These brake weights are going to add an eighth of an inch of width per side. One thing that I noted during installation is that I had 350 hubs on this vehicle when I started, but those stainless brake weights actually need a 475 to clear the Traxxas portal boxes. So I had to swap those hubs out as well. So I actually grew a quarter of an inch total per side on this rig. That's not that big a deal. I'm not too concerned about that part of it. And the last modification we're gonna do this week is actually going to be with the body. In the previous weeks, I showed you that bomber interior that we installed. And there's something that I like to do with these bomber interiors, and that is, is that I like to install a digital voltmeter. So first I'm gonna remove the interior from the body again. Now with the bomber interior removed, this little piece here is something that I designed and 3D printed. And what this is made to do is this is made to replace this little GPS bezel that sits here on the passenger side. This is a very simple little 3D printed part and it's made specifically to fit these little 12 volt voltmeters that you can buy on Amazon or eBay or a lot of other locations. And all this voltmeter does is it slides in from the back side of this bezel and just kind of rests in there. Now to hold the voltmeter in place, I'm going to use a little bit of E6000 or shoe goo basically, which, which is just a flexible glue. I do believe that it is slightly conductive. So I don't think that you're technically normally supposed to use it on electronics like this. So if you wanna be a little extra careful, try not to get it on the back side of the circuit board of this little voltmeter but I've actually never had a problem doing that and I've coated a lot of these little uh, voltmeters in the past. So you can roll the dice as you want there. But with the voltmeter installed in this little bezel, what we need to do is I need to actually cut out a portion of this little GPS that sits on the passenger side. And then this is going to sit in place of that and we're going to hold it in place again with a little bit more shoe goo. Once we have the voltmeter secured to the interior, we're going to take and solder the red and white wires of the pigtail together. And those are both going to go to the power side of our battery and the black side of the pigtail is going to go to the negative side. I'm going to put a plug in line between this voltmeter and the battery plug that we're going to be installing this into, of course, just because you don't want the body permanently tethered to your truck. You can use any type of plug that you have handy from servo plugs to regular battery plugs, just whatever you have handy and whatever you have access to. Normal LiPo cutoff on a LiPo battery is somewhere between three and 3.3 volts, depending on how conservative you get. So for this one, you can just look in there and see how close you are to around that 10 volt range. Just kind of gives you an idea of how much LiPo battery you have left at a quick, easy glance. And it's just something that you'll always have hooked up now. The installation of that little digital voltmeter is a simple one. It's kind of a fun, almost scale accessory, but it's functional. Now you can easily look in there while you're driving and see where your battery voltage is at. But with those few modifications done, I think that we're going to start along a path of increasing the performance of this a noticeable amount. One thing though, is that since we did remove that center mounted battery thing, an obvious area of weight specifically up high is the cage that comes on this TRX4 Sport unassembled kit version. Now, I'm not gonna remove all of it because 
All of the body holes are pre-cut for it. I would have to really try and figure out how to hide that and it's just not something I'm super interested in. So what I am going to do is that I think I wanna modify this plastic you know, expedition rack or adventure rack, whatever you wanna call it. I think I wanna modify it. And what I'm thinking at this point at least is just cutting off the section behind the B pillar and then all the way back, leaving the bed rail caps in place and getting rid of the sand ladders, the high lift jack, the fire extinguisher shovels and the roto packs on the other side. I'm not a big fan of the scale accessory stuff anyway, so I don't see that as a big loss. I'm gonna leave the roof rack section on the top of the body and the rest of it, I think we're just gonna kind of figure out something. I may work on some detail pieces that kind of go in the corner and maybe we'll make it look like chase truck style or something along those lines, but we'll have to think about that and I'll, I'll figure out how I want the style of that to really play out. But again, one of the rules that me and Matt put in place was that we had to keep the TRX4 Sport body or at least a TRX4 Sport style body. So I could pick up a clear unpainted one that doesn't have all of the detail stuff, but for now, I think we're gonna try and not go that route, not spend money on an extra body, and just try and modify the looks of this a little bit as we go. We'll see if we like it. If we don't, we'll pick up a clear body down the road. We've got a long ways to go on this truck. There's a lot of modifications that we're going to end up doing, and I think in the end, we will have a truck that I'm going to be happy with the performance of. In the week five video, when I installed the new wheels, we also discussed tires, and I actually did make Make a decision on tires and it's one that I've never ran before so looking forward to trying that out that'll come in maybe the next few weeks and for this week's question we're gonna talk about which direction you like to take your builds are you the type that likes to go for the scale route and sacrifice performance where necessary or do you go for performance and kind of just skirt that scale line, adding details here and there, but not if they're going to greatly affect your performance? My direction usually does lead more towards that performance side. I will sometimes sacrifice some performance for those scale looks that I'm after, but in general, I'm usually pretty concerned with how my truck is going to perform and what I'm going to be able to do with it. And sometimes not having the terrain to challenge your truck just pushes you towards that scale route and makes you focus more on that side than the performance because you don't really have the chance to test it as much. So I'll be interested to hear what you do and why you choose that route because all of us have different goals and visions for our truck and I think that it's interesting to hear how you guys look at the same things that I do. So take a minute and drop your opinion in the comments below. I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say. And also, if you guys have never looked before, I do have a website, harleydesigns.com, where I go through and catalog the builds that I do. And the budget build here is no different. It's having a running tally of all the parts that we've used on the truck up to this point, as well as all of the videos in one place. So if you're ever looking for something and you want to go just one easy place where that's at, there it is for you. Everything in a nice, easy list with all of the videos. Hopefully that's helpful to some of you guys and has a bunch of my other builds as well, which may also be helpful. But until next Wednesday, guys, I appreciate you watching. I hope you have an awesome rest of the week. Hit the like button if you enjoy these videos. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. Again, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.